Things are packages of, of emphasis. Some things are emphasized in a product, some things are not done as well in a product, some things are chosen not to be done at all in a product. And so different people make different choices. And uh, if the market tells us we're making the wrong choices, we listen to the market. We're just, we're just people running this company. We're trying to make great products for people. And so we're, we have at least the courage of our convictions to say, we don't think this is part of what makes a great product. We're going to leave it out. Some people are going to not like that. They're going to call us names. It's not going to be in certain companies' vested interests that we do that, but we're going to take the heat because we want to make the best product in the world for customers. And we're going to instead focus our energy on these technologies, which we think are in their ascendancy and we think are going to be the right technologies for customers. And you know what? They're paying us to make those choices. That's what a lot of customers pay us to do, is to try to make the best products we can. And if we succeed, they'll buy them. And if we don't, they won't. And it'll all work itself out. People say you, you have to have a lot of passion for what you're doing, and it's totally true. And the reason is, uh, is because it's so hard that if you don't, any rational person would give up. It's really hard, and you have to do it over a sustained period of time. So if you don't love it, if you're not having fun doing it, you don't really love it, uh, you're going to give up. And that's what happens to most people, actually. If you really look at, 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 at the ones that uh, ended up you know, being successful, unquote, in the eyes of society and the ones that didn't, oftentimes it, it's the ones that are successful loved what they did so they could persevere when, you know, when it got really tough. And, and the ones that, that didn't love it quit because they're sane, right? Who would want to put up with this stuff if you don't love it? So it's a lot of hard work and, and it's a lot of worrying constantly. And uh, um, if you don't love it, you're going to fail. So you got to love it, you got to have passion. I'm not sure I learned this when I was at Apple, but I learned it based on the data when I was at Apple. Uh, and that is, I now take a longer term view on people. In other words, when I see something not being done right, my first reaction isn't to go fix it. Um, it's to say, we're building a team here and we're going to do great stuff for the next decade, not just the next year. And so, what do I need to do to help so that the person that's screwing up learns versus how do I fix the problem? And uh, that's painful sometimes. And, my, and I still have that first instinct to go fix the problem, but that's taking a longer term view on people is probably the biggest thing. One of the keys to Apple is Apple's an incredibly collaborative company. And so, you know how many committees we have at Apple? No. Zero. But no committees. No committees. We are a very, we are organized like a startup. One person's in charge of iPhone OS software. One person's in charge of Mac hardware. One person's in charge of iPhone hardware engineering. Another person's in charge of worldwide marketing. Another person's in charge of operations. It's, we're organized like a startup. We're the biggest startup on the planet. And we all meet for three hours once a week and we talk about everything we're doing, the whole business. And there's tremendous teamwork at the top of the company which filters down to tremendous teamwork throughout the company. And teamwork is dependent on trusting the other folks to come through with their part without watching them all the time, but trusting that they're gonna come through with their parts. And that's what we do really well. And we're great at figuring out how to divide things up with these great teams that we have and all work on the same thing, touch bases frequently, and bring it all together into a product. We do that really well. And so what I do all day is meet with teams of people and work on ideas and solve problems to make new products, to make new marketing programs, whatever it is. And are people willing to tell you you're wrong? <laughs> yeah. I mean, other than 
snarky journalists. I mean, people that oh, work. Oh yeah, for no, we have wonderful arguments. And do you win them all? Or? Oh no, I wish I did. <laughs> oh, see, you can't. <laughs> if you want to hire great people and have them stay working for you, you have to let them make a lot of decisions, and you have to you have to be run by ideas, not hierarchy. The best ideas have to win. So, Otherwise, good people don't stay. But you must be more than a facilitator who runs meetings. You obviously contribute your own ideas. I contribute ideas, sure. Well, I, why would I be there if I didn't? You, when you think about focusing, right, you think, well, focusing is, is saying yes, no. Focusing is about saying no. Focusing is about saying no. And you've got to say no, 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 no. And when you say no, you piss off people. And they go talk to the San Jose Mercury and they write a shitty article about you, you know? And it's really a pisser because you, you want to be nice. You don't want to tell the San Jose Mercury the person that's telling you this, you know, just was asked to leave or this or that or this or that. So you take the lumps. And Apple's been taking their share of lumps for the last six months in a very unfair way. And it's been taking them, you know, like, a, like an adult. And I'm proud of that. Focus is about saying no. And the result of that focus is going to be some really great products where the total is much greater than the sum of the parts. And some mistakes will be made, by the way. Some mistakes will be made along the way. That's good, because at least some decisions are being made along the way. And we'll find the mistakes, we'll fix them. Well, one of the things that we always did was we tried to hire somebody who was better than us in a particular thing. That's still my greatest joy right here is when you hire somebody that's better than I'll ever be at one particular thing. So you try to hire just really outstanding people that are much too, they're actually much too senior for the current jobs that you have, but you know you're planning to grow so fast that in six months the job's just right for them and in a year they're scrambling to keep up with it. So we've grown it, you know, several hundred percent a year. And uh, it's a very, very different type of environment than most people are used to. We've got a whole generation of managers here they're trained to grow at 400 percent a year and they'd be bored stiff growing at 30 percent a year about over a million dollars when I was 23 and over 10 million dollars when I was 24 and over a hundred million dollars when I was 25 it's it wasn't that important uh, because I never did it for the money uh, I I think money is a wonderful thing because it enables you to do things. It enables you to in invest in ideas that don't have a short-term payback and things like that. But especially at that point in my life, it was, it was not the most important thing. The most important thing was the company, the people, the products we were making, what we were going to enable people to do with these products. So uh, I didn't think about it a great deal. You know, I never sold any stock. And just really believed that the company would would do very well over the long term.